Good morning, learners. Welcome to introduction part two. Now that you are aware about the basic skills of English language that you have exercised in classes 9th and 10th, what to do in class 11th? First of all that we need to do here is we have to strengthen and integrate these basic skills. How to strengthen them? How to integrate them? Here we have to take all these four skills into one integrated whole. You may be required to listen to some speaker. You may be required to read some text. And then on the basis of your reading and listening, you have to discuss the topic. And immediately after the discussion, you may be required to write on it. So this way, all the four basic skills would be integrated into one whole and you would be participating in each and every one and thus communication will be developing and taking place. Further what we have to do is that we have to take up these skills in the advanced form. The basic exercise you have done, now you have grown up, you have come to the senior secondary classes. As per your growth, your mental capability also grows. Accordingly, the syllabus sets the text and the syllabus so that these skills that you have gained with your growth, that they may get exercise with this. So we have to take up the advanced skills of the language in classes 11th and 12th. What are these? Let us see them one by one. In slide two, let us see the advanced listening and speaking skills. What is advanced listening and speaking skill? Sometimes you have felt that a speaker is speaking, but you are not getting what he see, what he or she says. This may be the problem. What is the reason for it? These reasons may be the phonetics. The introduction of phonetics should take place. That should be given to you. Because the speaker might be following the phonetics and he might be speaking as per the requirement, as per the teachings of the uh, phonetic system in the language. What is phonetics now? Actually every language follows and adopts some system of sound. This sound system is called phonetics. The study of it is called phonetics. Do you know how many less sounds are there in English? These units of sounds are called phonemes and they are divided into two parts, consonant and vowels. Altogether, in English, we have 44 sounds. Do you know it? Out of these 44 sounds, 24 are consonants and the rest 20, they are vowels. But still in 20, there are two groups. First 12 are the vowels and rest 8 are the mixed vowels you can say. Two sounds, two symbols of vowel are joined together to make one unit and they are called diphthongs. They are eight in number. So this way 12 plus 8 plus 24 we have 34 sounds in English. You should be aware of it and you should know how to pronounce these symbols that refer to these sounds so that you may read and you may understand the correct pronunciation of a word and you can learn the correct pronunciation so that you can listen and understand what the speaker is speaking. Another problem may be the accent of the speaker. When you listen a speaker from America, from Europe, from India, from China, or from Australia, they all have different kind of accent. 
accent means the way of pronunciation. This is different from country to country, place to place, region to region. You can't help much here in this case, but still we have to expose ourselves maximum to the maximum speakers so that we may get over it by and by. Then comes the stress pattern. What is it? Actually the words in English, all the words are not of same value in sound. A word may be of one sound unit only, another may have more than one sound units. These sound units in the words are called syllables. So, if a word has more than one syllable, one syllable may be more prominent than the other. So, the more prominent one is said to be the stressed one and it is marked with a symbol in dictionary and this is called the stress mark. In dictionary there is it is given and you should be aware of it too to learn the correct pronunciation and further comes intonation. Intonation is the rise and fall of the pitch of the sound in a sentence. Actually the same sentence can be read and pronounced in different ways to get different meaning. This way the intonation of the same sentence every time would be different. This we should be aware of and then comes the tone pattern. English has different tones, rising tone, falling tone, rising falling tone and these tone patterns also help us to understand the speaker, to listen and understand, to get their meaning. See the example, good morning. This is in rising tone. Rising tone is always in this way that it expects the response after it. That is why it is rising a good morning and the response would be good morning, good morning. This is in falling tone means the situation is closing now. After this it would be closed. No further response is required. So falling tone. Now, if we are aware of these about the speaker, then we may understand him better and respond him better this way. Now come to the next skill and that is advanced reading skills. Analyzing and inferring information, drawing in deductive and inductive conclusions, synthesizing and generalizing, extracting information and using for purpose. These are the sub skills here. What happens actually in case of the reading? We are given a passage. Passage contains some facts and information. Merely understanding the word meaning and sentence pattern will not help us for many passages where the information is given and it is so complicated that we are unable to answer the questions based on given on this basis. What happens actually up to class 9th and 10th you are picking up some word phrase or a sentence to answer a question. Mostly it happened so, but here now it is not so. You have to analyze the information and fact, you have to break them up into parts to understand better, to go deeper into them and this way to infer some meaning out of it. Then drawing conclusions deductively or inductively. This is another skill. Informations are given but directly you can, are not required to use the information, but you have to draw some conclusions on the basis of the given information. So, these you should exercise 
you should learn. And then you might have come across some questions that cannot be answered with any piece of uh, information that is given at one place in the passage. Sometimes to answer such questions, we have to pick up the information from here and there all over the passage and we have to synthesize them to get our answer. This way, this is called synthesizing. Sometimes something is given, some facts are given and we need, we need to generalize a rule on the basis of them. That is called generalizing. This way, involving these skills, if you are able to apply these skills on the given facts information, the passage and extract information and use it for your purpose, then you are in class 11th and 12th now. This is what is called advanced reading skills. Next is advanced reading skills part 2. Here another skill is, advanced skill is included in your course that is called note making and summarizing. What is note making and summarizing and what is its need and use? Actually, sometimes when we are reading, there is a lot of information and every information, every piece of information we, you cannot put in your mind all the time. You cannot memorize them. They are so much in quantum. So here in such a case, we have to make notes on it. What is this note for? The purpose of note is coding, storing and retrieving. Means we encode the information and these codes are stored properly in a system so that whenever we require to retrieve them, we need this information, we can retrieve it. We can get it back. This is the purpose of note making. So what do we do in making notes? First of all, in the given passage, we read the paragraph and try to find the point and sub point, I mean the headings and sub headings of the para. Heading means the heading of the para that may be the, that contains the whole matter in the paragraph and there are other sub points and topics in the para that are used to justify the heading. We have to identify them by using skim and skip method skimming the points and sub points and skipping the unnecessary details that is attached and added to the para. This way when we have identified them, we get them in the sentence forms. Now we need to convert these sentence forms into headings. We have to convert them into headings. The heading formation is another art you have to exercise it. Heading formation is given in class 10th in two chapters of grammar. I would refer them. If you have not read them properly, you should once again revise these lessons. These are nominalization and the passive. Where heading formation is given properly, you should exercise, take up the exercises given there and accordingly you should make the headings. Normally heading formation, high heading formation, what do we do? That the helping verbs, prepositions and determiners in the sentences are eliminated to the level that they do not, that this does not change the meaning and we get the heading. Heading is not a full sentence. Incomplete sentence may serve as heading where there is no helping verb, where there is no determiner and no preposition. Thus, formed headings are required to be arranged and numbered. And now the storing has taken place. So whenever there is need of retrieving it, what do we do? That we see the headings that are the codes for the information. We change them again into sentences and record them, that becomes the summary. Summary cannot be written without making notes. 
this way you have seen. Now, coming to the next skill, the advanced writing skills. Every writing piece has its format. Format is very easy. You can look into the book or it can be given by your teacher. What the format of a letter is, what is the format of a, an article, what about a speech and all that. There are some pieces where there is no fixed format, so you would be informed and uh, taught about it. Then comes the content. What is content? Content is the subject matter. Actually, whenever you are given to write something on a topic, there are two questions before you. What to write about and how to write it. So, what to write about when you try to get the answer of it by applying your mind, then you get the content. Content should be as per the requirement of the situation given in the question. Nowadays questions raise or give a situation that we have to respond in language, in proper language form. And language is nothing but a codified response to such situations. Here code is the word, code is the sentence that are the tool of a language. This, these codes we use and we respond to the situation properly, suitably. So, content must be as per the requirement of the situation. It should not be more or less. It should not be away from the topic. If it happens so, that then it would be irrelevant content and you would be penalized when your answer is being assessed. Further comes the expression. What is expression? Actually the content was set. Now you need to express it in language. And for that, you have to select vocabulary and sentences in which you have to express it. Once you are successful in selecting the apt vocabulary and opt sentence form, you would be able to express it. Okay? But you see that as the slide shows, expression is categorized by two words, fluency and accuracy. Fluency, what is fluency? Fluency means if you are expressing the content logically one after another following in logical order, then there would be fluency. Actually, there are some grammar lessons that help you to maintain fluency as connectors. You should use the suitable connectors at the suitable places. That also ensures fluency. If your presentation is logical, normally as normal human beings think, if you are following the same pattern in expression, that would be fluent. And then comes the accuracy. When you select the word vocabulary and sentence form to express a particular content, and if it is suitably done, then there would be contextual accuracy. Means you, your expression would express whatever was required as per the situation. Because you are successful in selecting the suitable vocabulary, and the suitable sentence form. And if not, if you are unable to select apt vocabulary and suitable sentence form, then there would be the problem in contextual accuracy. Suppose once you have selected the vocabulary and sentence form, but you are unable to frame the sentence correctly by using the words and the vocabulary. So there would be grammatical mistakes and your sentence would not be able to express what you wanted to say, then there would be grammatical, there would be the loss of grammatical accuracy. So, we have to be aware of all these things and this way we have to exercise them. This does not happen very soon. It takes time. We have to exercise it for a long time. 
we have to take some content, we have to express it. In the class we would discuss, you have to listen, you have to read the lesson, again you have to uh, answer the questions. This way continuously when you would be doing that, this would develop and you would gain ease and confidence. These are the four skills that are in the advanced form in the course and we need to apply all these skills with literature section as well. These uh, skills must be exercised with the lessons too. So this way we will continue in class 11th and 12th. Keep on learning. Thank you very much. Thank you.